Welcome back to another great edition of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I am your host, Chris Brown, and today we are talking about another great community organization here in the city of Calgary in our Community Spotlight series. Today on the show, we have Caleb Brown, the Community Engagement Coordinator for the Mustard Seed. Caleb and I are going to be talking about the Mustard Seed and an upcoming event. But before we do that, I want to welcome Caleb to the show. Caleb, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So, Caleb, I've got to ask the very first question for anyone who's relatively new to the city or doesn't know about your organization. What is the Mustard Seed? Yeah, so the Mustard Seed uh, is an organization with the goal of eliminating homelessness and reducing poverty. So that is our, our mission statement. We, we serve in five different cities in Western Canada. So Calgary is our main hub. And then we also have a location in Edmonton, Medicine Hat, Red Deer, and Kamloops, BC. Um, and again, each of those places, uh, our goal is to eliminate homelessness and reduce poverty. So we have our, our main uh, service is our shelter. Uh, and then we have a lot of other services that, that aim to uh, prevent homelessness, um, to meet poverty before it becomes homelessness. So we have community hubs throughout Calgary. And then we also have a big push on health and wellness services as well. So how do we do that? Uh, it's an age old question. I think a lot of people are trying to figure out in this day of age is how do we end homelessness? And how does your organization help move that goalpost to a more achievable position to end homelessness? Not here in Calgary, not, not just here in Calgary, Edmonton, Red Deer, Medicine Hat and Kamloops, but across Canada. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> I do a lot of workshops and seminars and a question I'll ask at the beginning is, do you think that's a reasonable goal? Do you think we can actually accomplish that? Um, I, I do believe that, that we can accomplish that, but I, I believe it starts when we come together and um, see it as, as a problem that we all need to fix. Um, it's not just their problem, but it, it's our problem as a community that we live in uh, our neighbors that we we see on the street um, it's something that we need to solve together and so we always start with that and ultimately it's it's that one act of kindness um, the history of the mustard seed started with a man named pat nixon and he was shown kindness by a group of people that offered him a home and it was that one act of kindness that changed his life and ultimately resulted in the mustard seed which has affected hundreds of thousands of people and so I really do believe in the power of that, that one act of kindness. Um, and we really believe in housing first. So it's really important um, to see housing as, as a basic need. Everyone deserves a home. And, and all of our services really focus on that. Our end goal is, is to get people housed. So let's talk about some of those services that the Mustard Seed provides. And then we'll talk a little bit more about how do we affect that change of getting people into housing. Um, what is, what are the services that the Mustard Seed provides now? Because I wanna talk about 2022, because 2022 we have seen the rise of the pandemic. People are struggling more. We are seeing more people lose their housing. So has there been a crunch on the uh, services that you've been able to provide because we are seeing such an influx of homelessness and houselessness within the city of Calgary and across the country? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know when it, when it comes to poverty, uh, the pandemic um, has affected people greatly in, in that regards. Um, I think an additional 77,000 people are experiencing poverty because of the pandemic. Um, and so it's, it's definitely affected people. Uh, on our end for housing, strangely enough, I think we've actually seen an increase of, of the number of people that we've been able to house in light of the pandemic. Um, there's been more of an urgency to get people housed, to get people out of the shelter, because uh, we've been at limited capacity at our shelter. And so we've seen, I think it's around 700 people during the pandemic that we've been able to permanently house. Um, so we see that as a win. Um, obviously there's been challenges, but um, in some ways we, we've, seen, we've seen a lot of good in that. So I, I'm not trying to, I'm, I'm asking the stupid question because I, I'm just trying to learn, but also my listeners might not know this as well and they might be asking, why did you ask this question? 
Where does the funding come from for the mustard seed? Because to house people, it is a costly expenditure. So where does, do you, do you accept donations? Do people come in? Mm -hmm. uh, do you get government grants? How does the mustard seed operate to ensure that they are able to help people who are in a dire need right now? Yeah, great, great question. Um, a I, lot try, of I try funding. around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, not a, not a stupid question. It's, it's a really important question. So a lot of our funding uh, for our shelter comes from, from the government. Uh, government funding supports a lot of different shelters in Calgary, but a uh, majority of our funding is, is from the community. Uh, we really do rely on our donors and community funding. And like I said, it's that, it's that community um, work coming together that we're gonna solve this problem. And so a lot of it is from the community, but um, we do get funding for our supported housing facility from the government, but again, majority of that was funded by the community. Um, you talked about services. We talked about ha uh, housing first service, but there's got to be other services that you provide because it would be a very uh, narrow hallway of viewpoints if you were just looking at housing first. What other services do you provide for uh, residents of the five communities that you're currently in? Yeah, so in Calgary, we have our health and wellness service. And so we have advocates there, counselors, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, doctors, nurses. Um, we help with ID services, taxes, employment. We have employment coaches. Um, we have our community hubs, which again, um, extend the reach of our, our health and wellness services throughout Calgary. So in areas where people aren't able to access those downtown services. And then uh, I briefly mentioned, but our 1010 Center is our supportive housing facility. It's one of Canada's largest permanent supportive housing facilities currently. And um, we move people out of the shelter into that facility and also into other uh, facilities and apartments throughout Calgary. Um, we do food banks, weekly food banks. We have our support center downtown, which is a place for people to come, get warm, have a meal, uh, if they need clothing, uh, healthcare items, we have it. We'll help them, try our best to help them in that moment. Um, and yeah, so we've got, uh, sorry. It sounds like you have some uh, great services uh, that you provide to the city. The, the ultimate follow-up question is, is anyone able to access those services or is it just for people who are homeless on the street who do not have a, uh, a place to go at night or do you offer services for the general public as well who might be facing economic troubles, who might be facing health issues as well? Yeah, so um, we, we don't help people just who are experiencing homelessness. A lot of our clients at our, um, our community hubs are mainly focused on people who are experiencing poverty. Um, so again, trying to meet poverty before it becomes homelessness. And then, um, yeah, our health and wellness service downtown, any, anyone can come and receive those services. It is primarily people who are experiencing poverty and homelessness, uh, but they will help with any problem that someone has. If someone needs to make a phone call, they'll make that phone call. If someone needs help with employment, writing a resume, they'll help them do that. Um, and they'll advocate on their behalf. So we won't, we won't turn anyone away, but if we're not able to help someone, we will make referrals to other organizations, um, but we'll try to push them in the right direction. Now, the rise of the pandemic, and I keep on uh, going back to that for a second because I want to know how the mustard seed's been able to adapt. That in-person, pers like person-to-person -person contact might not be achievable in this day of age with the rise of COVID-19. Um, how has the mustard seed had to adapt? Are you more virtually? And I know that's kind of a weird statement to say for people who are potentially experiencing poverty or homelessness where they might not be able to do things virtually. So how has the mustard seed had to adapt to working with clients, but also working with people who access your services? Yeah, yeah. in some ways, I think we've had to adapt like everyone else, <laughs> uh, whether that's plexiglass, shield masks. Um, we actually had an isolation unit running for quite some time during the, the height of the pandemic. And I actually did some shifts there as well. Um, so we had that running. Obviously our shelter was limited for capacity. Our downtown services, we weren't able to offer employment services. Uh, we couldn't have a place for people to come and use computers 
um, and just use those programs. Um, so a lot of that was shut down, but we never shut our support center down. Our doors were always open, giving out food, clothing, hygiene items, and our shelter was, was never closed, even though we had outbreaks. Um, but we've been able to, to do quite well, I would say, in having that access still available. Now, I, I want to talk about you for a little bit here before we continue on, because as the community engagement coordinator, that can mean a lot of things to different people. So what is yeah. your role in the, with the mustard seed and how do you, like, air quoting this, but engage the community? Yeah, no, that's a great question. <laughs> I, I think I've been discovering that myself. So thank you for asking. Um, so just to give some some background, uh, a year ago, I actually worked on street level, which is at our support center. So you're on the ground helping people in the moment, uh, seeing hundreds of people a day. And so I had that experience at the beginning before I got this job. Um, and now in community engagement, I'm engaging the community. So I connect with businesses, uh, community leaders like faith leaders, schools, organizations, figuring out ways that we can work together to better serve the community that we're helping. So we do a lot of educational things like workshops. Uh, we have a day in the life program. It's an experiential learning experience where you go out on the streets and you actually get to experience a day in the life of someone who experiences homelessness. And that's to gain empathy and understanding and to identify with people um, who experience that, which is similar to what cold, coldest night of the year um, aims for as well. But um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of teaching. It's a lot of speaking, doing interviews like this, talking about the mustard seed and our services, and ultimately just trying to get people um, involved, uh, bring awareness to these things, because it, it really starts with that awareness. Um, if we're not, if we're not um, aware of, of how to help people, then we're not actually able to help them. So I'm going to play a little bit of an advocate here, but a little like sure. a side advocate here. But do you think people are aware? Do you think people are aware of the troubles, the struggles that people are going through right now? Because we are we live in this very hyperbolic, very one sided view of the world right now with the rise of social media, with Facebook, with Twitter, with Instagram and all that. Do you think people are aware of the struggles that people are going through and the struggles that you see on a day-to-day -day basis with the organization, The Mustard Seed? Um, yeah, so I, I think from my experience, speaking at schools, uh, speaking with uh, businesses and other organizations, a lot of people are shocked when they find out things. Um, a lot of people don't know about the daily struggles of many Calgarians. And so, I think many people aren't aware. Um, I, I know for myself, before I started working in this field, I, I didn't have a clue. And um, it, when I started to talk with people and hear their stories and sit with them, um, that's when I started to really understand and gain compassion. And yeah. How do we change that though? Education's one thing, but again, yeah. we live in this very chamber-esque world where it's only me, me, me. So unless you sit down like we are right now I, I, you, with every single person in the city of Calgary, your message is going to be hard to get out. How, yeah. how can people like myself help advocate or help expand the message and expand the problems that are going on without seeing, seeming to be up on a hilltop yelling at them saying you need to pay attention because I think if you start yelling at people they're not going to pay attention so how do we get the word out with yeah. the rise of the way that we are right now if that makes sense yeah yeah I recently signed off of Instagram because I I just see that everywhere and I'm I'm, I'm tired of it um I think giving people the opportunity to volunteer um allowing them to come and have that experience where they're actually seeing these people face to face. They're not just numbers, they're not just names, but they see them, they hear their stories. And I really do believe in the education aspect as well, because um, even a uh, basic thing like person first language, instead of calling someone a homeless person, saying they are a person experiencing homelessness, it humanizes them, it puts them first as a person instead of their situation first. Little things like that 
uh, change the way we think. It changes the way we feel about people. And I truly believe it helps us to, to better help and better engage in that. Have you seen, in your role as community engagement uh, coordinator, have you seen a more shift towards helping to getting involved? Are the volunteer numbers there for the mustard seed? Or I, I can imagine as an organization, always want more volunteers because you don't want to tiger out your current volunteers. But with the rise of the pandemic, with the rise of potentially seeing more people on the streets or experiencing homelessness, are you seeing more of the community give back and help out and reach out and actually get involved because they do take pride in their city and they want everyone to succeed? Yeah. Um, yes and no. Like obviously because of the pandemic, we've, we've struggled to get volunteers, but at the same time, we've seen the community come together. So even this past summer, we sent out a call for water during the heat wave and within days, we had hundreds of people coming downtown giving water. I was on staff at the time and it was it's pretty exhausting hauling water all day, but um, it was worth it seeing the community come together to meet that need. Um, so there, there's a lot of generosity in people. And I think when we raise awareness, we tap into that generosity that I believe is in everyone. How can people volunteer? Because we've talked about volunteerism, but how can actually people get volunteer? And is there specific things you're looking for at the Mustard Seed in volunteers? Are you looking for someone who can help do data entry? Are you looking for someone who can go out on the street? Because while the Mustard Seed is located in the downtown core, Calgary is not just the downtown core. It is the Southeast, Northeast, the Southwest, and Northwest. So what type of volunteers are you looking for? And how can people volunteer? Yeah, so our shelter is actually in the southeast in the Foothills Industrial Site, and people can volunteer at the shelter, they can serve in the kitchen, they can do shifts there. Um, people can volunteer at our sorting center, which is also in, in the Foothills location, sorting through donations. Uh, people can come downtown to the support center, hand out food, clothing. They can come and just sit with clients and build a relationship with them, which is something that we really value. Uh, just having someone for, for our clients to talk to, um, to, to build a relationship so they're, they know that they're not alone. And um, it's really empowering for people. We also have our community hubs. We, we are asking a lot of people to come and just run programs. So if they are passionate about helping people with taxes, then they can come and run that. If they want to help uh, people write a resume, if they want to run ESL classes, um, Anything that they're passionate about that they want to come and contribute, uh, we welcome that. Um, yeah, and we, we also have opportunities at our health and wellness service as well. We take a lot of practicum students, uh, people wanting to focus on, on the medical field. Um, there's lots of different opportunities. Um, people can email us at, at, at the seed or call us or just come downtown and, and sign up for that. So just for their email perspective, the email is info at the seed.ca, correct? Or is there another one for volunteers? Yeah, uh, that, that works. It, it will eventually get to volunteer services. So. Awesome. Yeah. That's the There's one I used emails. to set up this interview. So that's that's the best one yeah. because they get back to It'll their... go to where it needs to go. Um, we are, we live in a very cold country, cold province, in a very odd weather pattern of a province. This is a hard time for a lot of people experiencing homelessness and uh, the cold weather, while we haven't gotten it much in the last few weeks, this is airing on Thursday, the 10th of February. Uh, we are experiencing kind of a Chinook right now where we can actually get out in maybe short weather, but people experiencing homelessness have to also experiencing experience the cold that comes along with not having a proper house. How does your organization, uh, looking at that housing first strategy, how do you go out to the community and try to identify those who are experiencing houselessness right now? Because we have a large city and to try and find everyone so they do feel warm is gotta be a tough challenge. Yeah, uh, we recently started up our seed reach outreach team. Um, they partner with organizations like Alpha House with the Dope Team, and they're going out to those active encampments. I think there's around 190 
active encampments that we know of in Calgary. What? That yeah, is a larger number Calgary. than I thought. <laughs> yeah. And so we have we have teams that go out to those encampments. These these are people that they're living rough, they're living outside. And for some reason, they're they're not using the shelter system. And ultimately we can't force people to go to the shelter. It could be they don't trust the system, they had a bad experience, maybe they were asked to leave. And so we're trying to reach those people by bringing essential needs and services to them. Um, and, and also trying to connect them with housing, trying to get them housed. Um, yeah, I think we we have a lot of other services that are, are focused on that, but our, our seed reach team is, is probably the main one. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. Ask about a very touchy subject that you just mentioned people who don't want help how can we help people who don't want help because your organization seems like a fantastic organization that you think people who might be facing troubles would come and use but for those who don't want the help how can we help them because i i try to be as generous as possible to my fellow man but when when you hope people get the help they can, want need and they don't accept it how can you change their ad mind or mindset to get help and how do you, how does the mustard seed work in that conjunction because like you said there are people out there who just no matter what you say or do they will not take the help yeah i think it's it's really important that especially as an organization like the mustard seed that we're not coming to people saying we know what you need but we're asking them, what, what do you need? Um, it, even with our community hubs, we, we've set up in those communities asking people, what, what is the need in this community and how can we meet that need? We're not coming in saying, we know what you need. Um, I, think, I think it starts with, with going to them, asking those questions. Um, there's there's an organization called Be the Change. I recently met with the leader of it a few weeks ago. And, and he was asking those questions, asking people, what, what do they need? How can we help them? Uh, I think it starts with that. Um, and it starts with just being, being open, being available to help people, regardless of where they come from, regardless of what situation they're in, um, to, to try our best to offer that help to them. Uh, any business, any organization puts in metrics to ensure that they're successful. What metrics does the mustard seed put into place to say, okay, if we can help, is it we can help X amount of people per week? Is it uh, if we don't see this bat person back after they've gone through our services, that's success? What are the metrics that the mustard seed puts into place to ensure that A, you are successful, but B, you, you help the people and they get on their feet? And that at the end of the day, to me, would be the best metric that they're on their feet again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's a great question. I don't know if I can fully answer that, but I will say uh, when we find housing for people, I think it's around a 92% success rate that they, they don't go back on the streets. And so that, that's success right there. Um, ultimately, I think the fact that we've been consistent and stable, I think it's been 38 years that we've been operating. Um, our doors are open and we're, we're in our community, we're making a difference. Even if we don't see a difference in someone's life that let's say they've been at the shelter for 10 years, um, just because they're, they're still there doesn't mean uh, we're not being successful, but um, we're, just, we're always there to provide space for people to have that journey of healing. Everyone's on their journey of healing and everyone takes um, that journey differently. And so, it's important to walk with them regardless of how long that takes. Um, and so we're here for the long run and ultimately to, to see homelessness eliminated. So I'm going to ask a personal question to you here, Caleb. And why do you keep coming back? Why do, what, what drives you? What's your motivation to do what you're doing? Because 
you always talk about volunteerism. What's your reason for volunteerism for or working with the mustard seed? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so, so I am a Christian, and uh, I went to college years ago in Victoria, BC. I grew up in BC, and I actually started volunteering at the Mustard Seed Church in Victoria. Not at all connected to the Mustard Seed in Calgary, um, but I just started helping out at the soup kitchen, and um, yeah, just my time in Victoria really shaped me, and I started talking to people on the streets. I would go downtown Victoria and just hand out clothing that I, I didn't want anymore. And um, I knew these people would have better use of it. And um, it was during that time and, and just my own faith, my, my belief um, to love your neighbor as, as, as yourself and um, to treat everyone with kindness. And that's really what fuels me. And e even this job, um, it was a really hard job this past year working on street level. But I think knowing that, that we were there to help people regardless of how they responded, we're there to love them. Um, I, I think that, yeah, there's, there's no greater love like that to, to show up and to love people regardless of, of what they do or what they say to you. You're gonna love them regardless. And um, yeah, that's, that's probably why. I, I appreciate you answering that. Um, I want to ask before we move into the coldest night of the year, I want to ask the, the, the overarching open ended question that I usually ask. What's the biggest misconception about the mustard seed that you would want if people out there go, oh, the mustard seed is this. What is the best, biggest misconception that you hear about the mustard seed? And how do you clarify that right now? And so ask your own question and answer it at the same time, Caleb. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I would say, so from the schools and people, I've, I've given a lot of tours of the mustard seed. A lot of people are shocked to find out that we have all these other services. So our health and wellness services, our, our permanent supportive housing facility, which is the largest in Canada. Uh, people just think we have our shelter and that's it. And um, we have a lot of different services that are ultimately focused on the whole person. Uh, having people housed, sheltered is great, and giving them food is great, but that can't be the only solution. It, it has to target the whole person and meet all of those needs. And so I think a lot of people don't know that, that we offer all these other services. And so I guess that's what I would say. No, I appreciate, but it, uh, because we can talk about the, every, the specific uh, services that you provide, but is there a website? Is there a link on your website that gives or explains the information or your services that you do provide a little bit more in depth, a little bit better than the quote unquote traditional 15 second soundbite that people might only hear if they watch this? Yeah, yeah. all the information is on our website. Um, I know some of our web website is under construction right now. Uh, we also have videos on YouTube that kind of go through our health and wellness services, our supportive housing facility, our community hubs, all that information is there. Um, and yeah, I think it, it's on YouTube and Facebook. So and the Instagram web, as well. The website is the seed.ca. Just want to make sure I've got the right yeah. one up here on my screen yeah. before I tell people to go there. Um, if you've listened to the show before, if you've uh, watched the show before, you know what I'm about to say. If you want to learn a little bit more about the mustard seed, literally in the show notes below. So scroll down if you're listening to this, pull over if you're listening to this in the car while driving and go back and you can learn a little bit more. Um, but I want to talk about an upcoming event for the mustard seed, the coldest night of the year. It happens on February 26th. What is the coldest night of the year and how can people, if people can get involved, how can they get involved? Yeah, so coldest night of the year is an organization that seeks to come alongside local charities. Uh, they're throughout Canada. So they come alongside local charities with the aim of raising awareness for people experiencing homelessness and raising funds for those local charities. And so in Calgary, there's, there's two, if you sign up or if you go on the page on coldest night of the year, you can look at locations and there's two for Calgary. One of them is Calgary East and the other one is Calgary Downtown. The mustard seed is Calgary East. So if you want to support the mustard seed, you can click on that. You can donate. You can join our team. Um, 
each so what team do you mean by that, joined by team yeah so so um like i said earlier it's to raise awareness so they they ask people to walk you can walk any amount of distance that you want you can have a team of people where you're walking together you're raising awareness you put a hashtag on social media i think it's cnoy22 um and it's to raise awareness you're identifying with people who are experiencing homelessness people who don't have a home to go to after a long day. And so it's to raise awareness and then you're raising funds for a local charity. And so you can join one of our teams at the Mustard Seed. My team is called Red Hot Chili Steppers. I think it's a, it's a pretty great name. Um, or, or you can join another team or you can make your own or you can just choose to donate. Um, or if you'd rather um, support the other local charities that are available in Calgary, I, I encourage people to do that as well. I, I do too as well. But before we start our wrap up here, I've got to ask the uh, question, what do you, what, what's your team anticipating doing? Are you anticipating walking the downtown core? If you do get involved with the red hot chili steppers, what can they expect on the 26th? Yeah. So unfortunately they pulled this night of the year announced, uh, I think a month or two months ago that it's all virtual now. So what that means is there won't be check stops. There won't be a place that you all gather together and walk together, though you, you can do that in your community with your group if you, if you choose to. Um, I'll probably be walking alone or maybe with some friends. Uh, you can walk anytime from now until the 26th. And once again, you can walk any, any distance that, that you want to walk. Well, I thank you for telling us about that because, uh, as I as I told Kayla before the pre in the pre interview, uh, the coldest night of the year was the very first event that I covered when I moved to Alberta in Lloydminster. It was the very first event that I covered there, and I think it's a spectacular organization that raises money for great causes like the mustard seed. So, if you have time. Uh, like Caleb said, uh, it might not go to the mustard seed. If you want to choose the other organization, uh, you can as well, or another non, uh, organization that helps uh, end homelessness and helps uh, those experiencing homelessness get on their feet again. Um, do it because we live in a great country. I know there's a lot of people struggling right now and we need to identify that. And Caleb, I want to thank you for everything your organization does because I, I'm still shocked that you said 190 active encampments. The fact that we have this problem in this city, we need to address it and we need government organizations at the table to help address it. And I'm glad there's an organization like yours that is doing that. Yeah, thank you so much for giving us the time and space to talk about this today. No, and I appreciate it because uh, like I said, your organization does uh, fantastic things. Um, for anyone who wants to learn more about the mustard seed, I'm assuming they're social media. I'm assuming they're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook yeah. as well, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we have one for, for every location. So if you're Calgary, it's the mustard seed YYC. Okay. So I should, I should, I should know that before I start tagging everything in the show notes. But uh, like I said at the beginning, uh, a little earlier, for anyone wants to learn more about the mustard seed and all the great work that they do do in this community, please scroll down and click on because Caleb uh, and I have discussed as much as we can in 30 minutes, but I feel like there's so much more that we could have done. So Caleb, I want to thank you so much for doing this. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Uh, for everyone here at the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown, have yourself an excellent rest of your day. And remember, guys, just talk, have a conversation, get out from behind the keyboard and have a conversation. For everyone here at the Cross Border Interviews, talk to you later.